In this video, I'm gonna be sharing five of the big mistakes I made as an engineering student. Each of these mistakes cost me better grades and opportunities, and looking back, I think if I would have known this stuff from the start, it would have made a big impact on my future. Today, hopefully you can learn from where I went wrong, and if you already are making some of these mistakes, hopefully it'll inspire you to make some change. Also, if you're new here, my name is Ben, and I'm a structural engineer working and living on the east coast of Australia, and if you find value in this video, please do give it a like, and consider subscribing. All right, so the first big mistake I made is not making course summaries. What I mean by this is that while I do have notes and plenty of other study material left over from each of my courses, none of it is concise and super easy to refer back to. And this is a real shame because even though I took all these courses and had a deep understanding about them at the time, if I wanted to relearn any of this stuff, I would literally just have to reread all of my leftover material. In hindsight, I think using the same note taking and general study strategy towards all my courses wasn't the best idea because now for the courses that I actually use as a structural engineer, I wasn't really able to capture and retain any more information than usual. And realistically, on average, there was only about one or in some cases two courses per semester that actually applied to structural engineering. So I think having a more intense study strategy and finding the time at the end of the semester to make a summary would have been fine. Now, exactly what I'd put in a course summary would probably slightly differ depending on the course, but for the the most part, I think it would just include a small summary on each of the topics we covered. So this would include things like a recap of the main concepts, any equations or formulas, and also any diagrams, tables or graphs, or definitions. Personally, I think creating something like this at the end of a course is the perfect way to solidify and capture everything that you've learned, because not only will it help with your understanding in university and later courses, but it'll also be a resource that you can refer back to when you start working. It's honestly quite shocking how quickly you can forget something after you learn it if you don't continue to use it. So learning how to preserve knowledge is something that I've really learned to value. Now, like I said earlier, I definitely wouldn't do this for every course, but I would recommend doing it for the courses that you think that you're actually gonna use after you graduate. Obviously, the earlier you can decide what subspecialty of engineering you wanna go into, the less of these course summaries you'll need to make, but until you decide what you wanna go into, I don't think it's gonna hurt if you make a couple extra ones. All right, and number two is not doing personal projects. As a former engineering student, I'll be the first to admit that between going to class, studying, doing assessment items, trying to have a social life, and maybe even working a part-time job, there isn't a lot of spare time. But I think as your workload goes up and down throughout the semester, sliding in these little extra personal projects can make a huge difference. I think as students, we often try and wait until we fully understand something before we get started working on any sort of projects. But what I've found is that there's really no point in waiting because the project itself will teach you the skill. And this is something I've definitely experienced now as a working engineer, as everything I do is for a project. And as someone with only a few years of experience, Every project I do has something new on it and it just pushes me to learn the skill. I think as a student, whenever I did a course that was more design orientated, like steel design or concrete design, these would have been the perfect time to try and slip these projects in as they have so many different easy options for things to do personal projects on. I also think that while you're at uni, it's really easy to get caught up in the theory when you're doing these design courses because usually there's lots of calculations you need to be able to follow. And by doing personal projects, you're actually able to take a step back and see the bigger picture and actually focus on how you apply all this theory and kind of learn how it actually gets used. Also, one more bonus and another thing I learned about doing personal projects is that by putting them into a portfolio and showcasing them on your resume, it makes a huge difference to landing internships. Particularly in structural engineering, people don't seem to put a lot of effort into their resume and most of the time don't even have a portfolio. So by doing these personal projects and showcasing them in a resume and portfolio, not only are you getting an academic advantage, but you're also way more likely to land an internship and a graduate job. Okay, and my third mistake was memorizing and not understanding. Now, I think this is a mistake that a lot of students make, so I'm definitely not alone on this one. At university, memorizing things will get you good grades and it will make you appear good on paper. 
but in my opinion, once you leave university, this won't really help you that much. Yes, of course, appearing good on paper may help you to land a graduate job, but beyond that, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. If I were to do things over, I would spend a lot less time repeating questions and just trying to drill things into my brain, and instead I would spend a lot more time doing things like reading the textbook and just trying to grasp the concepts. This is because as a working engineer, not having a good understanding of the general theory on the things you're trying to design makes knowing where to start almost impossible. And given that majority of the stuff that you learn at university is super technical and uses first principles, all of this stuff you've memorized doesn't even help you. So I think rather than getting bogged down in the nitty gritty, you're way better off staying as practical as possible because a lot of this theoretical stuff has been programmed into software that you'll just need to be able to use. All right, now the next big mistake I made is not getting an internship earlier. As some of you might be aware, I only got my first internship at the end of third year and in my opinion, I missed out on a full good year of interning. Let me explain. From my experience, I think the perfect time to get an internship is at the end of second year. This is because by that point, you've got enough of the fundamental knowledge that you won't need to be guided through the absolute basics and the work that they can give you can actually be meaningful. Before the two year mark, I just don't think you've covered enough content in order to work independently. And if you do get an internship, you'll just end up doing tedious tasks that don't really help you develop. Anyways, assuming that you're able to get an internship after second year, besides just the technical advantage you'll get by actually applying the stuff you're learning in class, you'll also get insight into the industry industry as a whole and be able to make better decisions with what you choose to do after you graduate. Part of what you'll learn is that doing engineering at university is a lot different to what doing engineering within a business is like and without getting this experience firsthand, I think it's really hard to make an informed decision about whether you even want to become an engineer or what type of engineering you want to subspecialize in. One of the things that I learned from my days interning is that while two companies may look very similar from the outside, there's actually going to be quite a lot of differences and depending on what you dislike and like, one of those companies is going to be a lot more enjoyable for you to work at. For example, do you want to work for a company where everyone's fully remote and you never actually see anyone? Or do you want to work in an office where everyone comes in every day? Likewise, would you prefer to work on projects that are nearby and that you're actually able to go and visit and see being constructed? Or do you not care about that and you'd rather never step foot on site? There are so many small differences like this that you don't even think about as a student and it's not until you're actually there and you've experienced it for yourself that you'll actually figure out what you prefer. Also, as an intern, because you don't have a lot of responsibility and often you're only employed casually or for a fixed period of time, you get the luxury of jumping between companies without any repercussions. So as a student, this is a really good way to trial as many different companies as you can and really start banking some life experience. All right, and my fifth mistake was not investing in myself. What I mean by this is that as a student, it was really easy to get stuck in the cycle of only focusing on assessment instead of how much I was actually learning. Now, obviously just focusing on assessment did inherently teach me something along the way, but if I could go back, I would change my mindset from assessment-based learning to skill-based learning. This would mean that instead of trying to optimize each one of my study sessions for getting the best grades, I would spend a lot more time on the practical side of things. So instead of just pouring all my time into assessment items, I would spend a lot more time doing things like reading the textbook again, just so I would grasp the concepts better, but also learning how to use software programs so that I could apply everything that I was learning. And this even goes back to what I was saying earlier about doing more personal projects because this sort of self-directed learning is what I've found over the last couple of years makes way more of an impact. Personally, I think going this little bit deeper and extending on what you just need to do to pass the course is worth the extra effort because at the end of the day, you're actually paying to get the skill, not to just have information blasted into your brain and not really remember anything. Anyway, I hope that you learned something in this video and if you did enjoy it you might like this video here where I explain how to make an engineering resume or that video there where I explain the most important topics to learn in structural engineering. As always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.